So with Halloween coming up, we thought we would go ahead and make some new tools for carving jack-o'-lanterns. So in the United States during Halloween, we carve pumpkins. And what everybody ends up doing is either getting a very dangerous cutting knife from the kitchen or buying a really cheap and chintzy terrible kit from the store that has little aluminum blades that bend over and break and all the rest of it. So what we wanted to do was go through and design a couple of tools that were safer and potentially better than traditional pumpkin carving tools that could still be produced with mass production 3D printing so that we get all of the traditional design rules that come up in this channel. And what we ended up looking at most closely were the triangles of the eyeballs. We wanted something to just punch out those eyes. But there's not really a hole punch out there that we could find, so we're like, we'll go ahead and make one. And as we went through the design, we realized there were actually a number of areas where this was difficult to manufacture traditionally, and where 3D printing could actually do it better. So first of all, looking at the hole punch, well, you just say, well, make a cookie cutter and make it triangular and then just whack it into the pumpkin. That's actually not very reliable. You need something very robust and deep in order to do this well, because it is gonna be whacked by a hammer. You can't hand press this into the side of a pumpkin. The gourds are just too tough. And you now say, okay, well, why not just make a thick brick that has a triangle on the end of it and you whack it with a hammer. That's okay, but now you have the issue of the eyeball is now stuck in the side of the stamp and you can't get it out and you don't want to have to carve the eyeball out of the carving tool. So you need some way of ejecting it. This is when you get to basically a plunger type of system. And when we were designing this, we basically put all of those parts and pieces together. So you basically have a pumpkin carving eye chisel. So starting with that, first of all, you print it vertically. If it's whacked with a hammer, all the layer lines are in compressive strength. You never have to worry about delamination or breaking in that kind of a way. All the layer lines align with the part as it's being printed. The reason you put it upside down is because if you put the blade down against the print bed, well, you wouldn't have a blade anymore. You wanna to get to the smallest width that you possibly can, which is the width of the nozzles. There's some tricks to potentially make it thinner, but we're not really gonna go that direction. Now, of course, you make the top of it triangular. What we actually did was we did not make it a perfect triangle. We gave it a little bit of a tip, a pyramidal shape. That way you have some orientation. That way if you're trying to save the plugs or put them back or do something else, you can actually save those up that way. Now, the other thing, while we printed it vertically, you have the stock on the back side. So let's go ahead and talk about that plunger, which is so delicious. On the bottom, the plunger actually contacts the bottom of the print bed as well. If you start out clear and the plunger is forward, you punch in some eye hole just like that. The plunger is now halfway right there. You don't have a big old lever to shove it through. So you need to be able to get access to the plunger in the back. We also put these flanges on the sides right here. So you are able to slide it up and down very easily and get access to it. If we were redesigning this, we would probably actually make these more pronounced so that it's actually something you can grab and push because they're not quite enough to get enough purchase to push out some eyeballs. Since this blade ends up getting kind of thicker after a period of time, it can actually compress and grab the eyeball a little bit more than we would like. But ultimately, what is special about this is that this plunger, these handles, and this outer stamp are all printed in one go. This part comes off the machine just like this. So you have an assembly, a series of parts that have all been put together in one go. There's no assembly, there's no multiple dies to be made. This is incredibly economical if you wanted to mass produce it because not only is this auto ejectable by our machine so we can make thousands of these in a couple of weeks, but you're able to get all that assembly done so that this can come off a machine and go right into a box. Those are the type of parts and designs that you wanna create because they can't be made any other way and they're exceptionally economical to produce because you can do print on demand. You don't have to have a print farm or anything else. You can just upload the file to something like our Etsy plugin. And then when somebody purchases the part, it prints out and goes in the box. And you don't have to worry about all the parts being in there or little nubbins or screws or assembly or any of that kind of stuff. From a traditional mass production standpoint, you don't have multiple molds. You don't have tools for this and tools for that and tools for that. You just have one single design altogether that is robust and is reliable. You 
you can whack this with a hammer and it's not gonna get beat up. Since this is intended as a holiday item where you are using it basically once and then losing it, just like most of those pumpkin carving kits, which are the standard to compare against, we wanted to use PLA so that it was a more eco-friendly kind of option and a lower cost type of option. It has great color, it looks the way we want it to, it does everything that we want it to do. As far as the design of the teeth up on top, people would say, oh, since the layer lines are going this direction, because we print it like that, those teeth are weaker. But again, this comes back down to the fact that the only force that this is feeling is in this direction, pushing straight up and down. Whereas if anybody reefs on it, that's still not gonna tear off those teeth. And again, even if that did happen, it's still performing better than the chintzy little carving kits that you get at the store. And this could be produced for a few dollars very easily and sold for as much. And then the one final little cherry on top is the design on the side. If you were using traditional manufacturing, these types of embossings and embeddings would have to be done through like a sticker or paint or something along those lines. Since we're using printing, this type of texture, this type of imprint is totally free. So you can put in designs for textures and logos and that kind of stuff into a part. And even though it's fairly subtle, it's not commonly understood or utilized because you can create different designs. We can change that to a Christmas tree. We can change it to your company logo. You are able to embed that stuff for free and immediately have branding, a fully assembled part, and a reliable part off the machine ready to go. This is the magic of FDM, by the way. The fact that you can pull it straight off a machine, there's no post-processing, there's no refinement, it goes right into a box and it's done. Now, as far as the rest of the design here, the subtle parts, as per usual, on the bottom, make sure you have a little chamfer around the outside of all these edges, otherwise this circle and this outer edge could blend together from like an elephant's foot if you design those tolerances too closely. Put a little chamfer on there, eliminates it forever, you never have to worry about it. Of course, there's no support anywhere inside of here. The side handles are designed as trapezoids. That way you have no support or overhangs that need to be held. Again, if we were readjusting this a little bit, we might flatten out the bottom edge of this so that you can pull it back more easily because that angled design does make it harder to like grab that if you really try to reef the pumpkin out. But again, that's what that back hole is. But overall, this works fairly reasonably. Since it is shoving it into a pumpkin, you do have to beat it with a hammer. If we were modifying it, we would probably put some microstructures in the bottom of this as well so that it becomes denser down there without having to change infill settings. That way you can use a generic print on demand app, again, like our Etsy app. So this is something that's really easy to make and very reliable and affordable, both on print on demand and in mass production. But then we went just a little bit further with this. We decided to go ahead and try to make some of those chintzy little knives. Now there were a couple of ways of doing it, and I'll show you this one here in just a moment. But the traditional knife is a traditional knife. We used a couple of serrated edges. We were able to make one side a little bit sharper, one side having bigger teeth there so you can carve through it all. Um, the handle of it all is fine and durable, and this fits diagonally on the bed. So even though this is wider than the, the 220 millimeters that is traditionally there, you rotate it on the bed, 45 degrees, and now you get an extra two inches. You're able to label it all, you're able to change the blade, all this kind of stuff. With these knives, these were very much an experiment, and they really demonstrate the type of experiment, because while this is the traditional way that would, people would try to saw a pumpkin, you can mess with different types of knives like this, where you now have this handle. We went ahead and did this, and we took them until they broke, but this different handle design is more ergonomic. So if you're trying to make a knife that is safe for people, the easiest thing to do is make something that's sharp enough that it can actually cut, and also ergonomic enough so that their hand doesn't slip and hit themselves. Good design protects the user. And 3D printing lets you iterate through those designs so that you can actually get to the design that is the best. This design is safer, but it also gives people too much leverage on the thing. With the blades of these two, the way we made them is they have kind of a hemisphere on the side of them so that we have a sharp edge flat against the bed right here and then curved up from there. We would actually make this blade a little bit squarer because this hemisphere ends up making it want to ride around in a circle and then you twist the blade back and then you end up fighting this whole thing. So there's some things we can do with knife blades that could make these a little bit more reliable. They're actually not that great for carving pumpkins, but you get to experiment with it. And if they were good for carving pumpkins, and but then you started getting more user feedback of like, oh, the handle doesn't fit very well. Well, you can bulge up the handle and change that and then upload a new design and then every product going forward has that upgraded design. These are really just a demonstration of iterating through all of this. But hopefully that gives you a little bit of context around how to make some nifty brand new Halloween inventions for whatever your business might be. You can find these files, download them, or purchase the actual prints themselves. Links are down in the description. And if there's other topics or holidays that you want us to design for, go ahead and leave a comment down below and we will get to them as soon as we can. 
Have a great day, everybody.